Um, that has been a, a growing piece of me, you know, as an artist. Um, you know, being very intentional, being purposeful in your passion. And, you know, art says nothing, but it says everything. It's, it, it quietly speaks to you. Um, whether you're a child or an adult, you can, you can see something in that pain. And it's, it's palatable. It's easy to engage. And so, and enlightening. So, so there's opportunity to learn, to educate, and I understand that. And so, you know, I spend my time doing research, I spend my time studying, and then I let it all ingest inside of me and, um, and formulate. And then I, I express it, you know, I, I just immediately just put it out on, on, on the canvas. And, and that's the emotional piece in it. And that's the really honest piece in it because it gives you your own signature as an artist, you know. You know, that's Ted Ellis style, you know, I can, I, I can tell. So 30 years of pain, 30 years of engaging, when you're talking about you know, communities, you're talking about organizations, um, um, profit, nonprofit, when you're talking about um, institutions, you know, at churches, at corporations, you know, I've had those opportunities. Walt Disney, Merck Pharmaceutical, Exxon Mobil. You know, my recent exhibition that's at Lytos, the um, Juneteenth Journey to Equity Excellence, where I have 17 dynamic paintings that, that speak. My exhibition at HMAC, Houston Museum of African American Culture, my Juneteenth champions, those 30 individuals, 90% from the Galveston community to tell their stories, you know, on, on fighting racism, fighting injustice, fighting for freedom and, and equity. These stories of these individuals right here from Galveston to the formation of the 11th federal holiday. And so you say, Tay, well, what inspires you? You know, you know, I have the ability to heal at the end of the day. And our goal is to uplift humanity, um, improve human capital. And we're supposed to do that with the gifts that we have. So I have this little thing about sharing and caring. You know, you know, you got to care about people and you got to share your gifts and what you have. My passion, my love is my heart. And so I get to, sh I get to create these stories and share. So when we talk about Jack Johnson, the Galveston Stevedore, before he became heavyweight champion, what's that story of that man who was dedicated, you know, to his family and to his community? Uh, how challenging it was during the early 1900s, which was, was a challenge for a black man to be free and to be liberated and to speak. And if you look at all of his film and his footages, if you read his stories, you see this undeniable will and strength of a man, you know, to, to, to measure up and show his value in his work. And, and, and from Galveston, Texas, he went all over the world, Prussia, Russia, Switzerland, Europe, I mean, Havana, Cuba, he was there, a stevedore. And prior to a stevedore, he took every odd job. But you got to think about what got him ready in preparation for becoming a heavyweight champion of the world. Be you know, prior to that, he was the color champion of the world. Prior to that, he has always continued to deal with oppressive forces that he was up against. That was Jack Johnson. And so when we celebrate Juneteenth, Two and a half years outside of signing the Emancipation Proclamation, General Gordon Granger came to Galveston, Texas, and said, cease and desist, cease and desist. Slavery is over with. Those that have been enslaved are now free. Abraham Lincoln charged him with that responsibility with the colored troops that were placed here in Galveston. When the folks saw the faces of those black soldiers, these men of bronze that were marching over at Reedy Chapel, you know, saying that slavery was over with. And Galveston, the heart of Juneteenth. You can easily say freedom started here, comprehensively, collectively, among all the citizens of the United States. That's why it became the 11th federal holiday. And so folks like Jack Johnson, who was unapologetic in fighting racism, stood up against all the adversity in that, that aspect. There was something about the stevedore. And when you learn the history of the stevedores and what they did, they kept this country fluid. They kept it dynamic in the sense of engaging capitalism because all kind of trade and commerce was happening through the stevedores. So all the produce and stuff was being shipped internationally. The stevedores, the pressers who were there were loading up the trains, loading up rail, loading up the ships, 
you know, so that folks could be fed, folks that have clothes, you know, that was the stevedore. He was a champion long before he became the heavyweight champion of the United States. And he is just one of he is many one. lives you have documented. Ted Ellis, I have so many questions for you. Unfortunately, <laughs> we are out of time, but thank you so much for all your work in the community and everything you have done. And the good news is, you all have many opportunities to see Ted's work. Uh, there are so many exhibitions currently on display yes. and upcoming as well. So happy Juneteenth to you, sir. And it is great to meet you. Thank you, Derek. Thank you so much. All Appreciate right. It. In the meantime, Courtney, we're going to send it on over to you. Thanks so much, Derek. It's so great to meet the artist, of course. Uh, Ted Ellis, some of his work is inside the NIA Center right behind me as well. A fabulous story. Hey, guys, don't go anywhere. Coming up next on Houston Life, they're the future leaders of Juneteenth. This year's Juneteenth pageant winners are here right in Galveston, plus a fourth grader who just won a citywide contest with his inspirational speech about...